In this video, we'll be taking up the homework for uh, making connections with rational functions. So for the first question, we have uh, Stuart. He's basically, he has a job. Unfortunately, it takes him four days longer than expected. That means the pay per day drops uh, $18.75. So this is the original pay per day, and this is the actual pay per day. This is going to be lesser because he took more time to do it. Um, and then the difference between the pay per days is $18.75. Solve the rational equation. Um, not much to say. The hardest part of the question is generating this, this equation which models the situation. Uh, question two is pretty easy. It's basically what we did in the uh, handout together. So I won't spend too much time on it. You're basically solving for the population because you have the model. You can solve for the population in the future. You can solve for um, the time it takes to reach a certain population. Uh, of course, you can graph the function that um, you can graph the model that um, that helps you analyze the the population. Uh, and then they ask you for time it takes to double the population. So that's basically another solving a rational equation question. And they ask you what's the significance of the horizontal asymptote. And it simply represents the upper limit to the population. Okay, for question three, we have uh, pressure and volume, and they're inversely proportional. So they ask us for the for the graph. The, um, they ask us for the significance of the horizontal asymptote. Uh, they ask us for what happens when the pressure is halved. Um, and how's the volume going to be changed? So there are different notations you can use, but the idea is the same. If you have the pressure, then you'll see that the volume is doubled. Uh, and if you, uh, if the volume is quadrupled, then the pressure is a quarter of what is that before. This, these kind of questions, very similar to what you did in grade nine academic when you did the, um, the measurement unit. Like I don't know, let's say we're studying the sphere. Um, what happens to the volume of the sphere if the radius is tripled? So then you would you would basically show that the volume is uh, 27 times of that of before. So something like that, very similar. So the approach, I use function notation, but you don't have to use function notation. You can just use your grade nine notation for questions like I just mentioned. So one more time, like uh, if I double the length of the, the rectangle prism, if I triple the width, how would the volume change? Something like that. Okay, so for question four. Question four, uh, a lot of students struggle with this question. Um, but, uh, sorry, four and five. So uh, question four, you basically have two parts to the race. So this is speed for the second part and speed for the first part. And in the second part, you're faster by two kilometers per hour. So yeah, that's, that's how I build the equation, the model of the situation. And then you have to reject because um, x is between 0 and 2 based on the, the way I designated my variables. So the slower pace is 5.6 kilometers per hour. Once you finish building the, the equation correctly, the rest is really straightforward. Like look, Once you clear the denominators, you have, a, you have a quadratic equation. At the very worst, you use a quadratic formula, right? Like that's, that's the worst case scenario. Okay, question five. So we have Arshia and Sarah. So this one, this question reminds me of what you did in grade 10 when you did linear systems with the speed, distance, time problems, the rate problems. So to me, it's pretty much exactly the same question. Um, <clears throat> um, so I, I filled in the table. Do you need the table? No, but a lot of students like the table. It helps them organize information. But once I have the table, I can build the equation because I know that Arshia completes the race a quarter hour faster if there were no accidents, okay? Because in the war problem, it says Arshia had a, like some some, tire, some car problems, some engine problems. So she actually lost the race, even though she was going faster. But she, if there were no car problems, then she would have finished the race a quarter hour faster. So I can use that relationship because this is 42 over X is Sarah's time. And this is Arshia's time. 
Okay, R shares, if you take R shares time and add by a quarter hour, then the times will be the same. And that is the hard part of the question. And then solve solve equation, pretty, uh, pretty rudimentary to be honest with you. Uh, just don't make any careless mistakes. Actually, for this question, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but I kept making the same algebraic mistake. I think I forgot to multiply by four here. I only multiply by x plus 0.4. So be careful, multiply left side and right side by lowest common denominator. But that's just me being silly. So hopefully you didn't, you weren't silly like I was. Okay, uh, okay. Number six is a very common question in the United States. Like I see this question all the time. So I feel like I was obligated to put this question here. Um, and this version of the question is actually rather simple. So. We have three people. Haley uh, finishes one third, one third of a piece per day because it takes her three days to finish a job. So if she takes, it takes her three days to finish a job, each day she'll be able to finish a third of the, the job. It takes Alex four days to finish the job. So it takes every day she'll, uh, he'll accomplish a quarter of the job. And Emily would finish a sixth of the job per day. Um, and that's called the work rate. Okay, and we're gonna make a huge assumption when they work together, they don't interfere with each other, and they don't, there's no synergy whatsoever, which is horrible. Because if I'm asking people to work together, their time should better, like they should work such that their combined time is should be lesser than their individual time, uh, and there should be a bonus of synergy. But, anyways, there's no, no synergy and there's no interference, so you're quite simply you add up their rates. So if Haley finishes a third of the piece per day, Alex is finishing a quarter of a piece per day, and Emily finishes a sixth of the piece per day, then that means uh, all together, they can finish three quarters of a piece per day. And if, if they can finish three quarters of a piece per day, then they, um, that using that idea, that it will take four thirds of a day to finish one piece. This, if that did not make any sense to you, that to me is like a like a speed uh, distance time problem. If I give you the rate at which you're traveling, um, and I tell you you need to travel one kilometer, you can solve for the time it takes to travel that one kilometer. Okay, so that's that's basically what I'm doing over here. Now you're like, well, what this had nothing to do. This has nothing to do with rational equations. Well, uh, this was the basically rudimentary way of approaching the question this is the, the rational equation way of approaching the question so you add up their work rates okay there's no interference there's no synergy um and this is their their sum of their work rate and i am interested in x because x actually represents the time it takes for them to complete um the piece so like if it's one third that means it takes three days to complete one piece if it's four, four, one quarter, so which means it takes four days to complete a piece. So what is X when they're all working together? This is the time it takes to complete uh, one piece. Um, and that's it. Yeah, uh, there are more complicated uh, work rate. These are called work rate problems, um, but the idea is very similar. You you really want to generate the work rate of each individual and then combine their work rates and see how long it takes for them to complete the job. So that's the solutions for making rational, making connections with rational functions.